Now, I've sung my praises about the Fives from Klipsch ever since I reviewed them a few years ago. Their versatility, being able to connect to a laptop, turntable, smartphone, or tablet via Bluetooth, a TV via HDMI arc or optical, and a subwoofer of your choosing for better bass extension. And the price was unrivaled considering it's a much better alternative to a soundbar in its same class, especially if you connect a subwoofer to it. But then Klipsch thought, yeah. The Fives are dope AF, but what if we made them bigger, much bigger? Well, let's talk about it. If you're familiar with the Fives, you'll be familiar with the Nines, or the Sevens for that matter, which also came out along with the Nines if you wanted something in between. What I like about the Fives and the Sevens and the Nines is that they are a part of Klipsch's heritage line of speakers. So I like the wood veneer that surrounds the cabinet along with the retro rotary knobs that are on top when switching inputs or adjusting the volume. But even the magnetic grills look sharp, giving the system a classic vintage aesthetic. The Nines boast an 8-inch high-excursion woofer with a 1-inch titanium tweeter housed in Klipsch's signature Tractrix horn. They also sport a rear-firing bass reflex port for some solid bass extension on their own, but because of that, it's recommended to keep these speakers at minimum 12 to 18 inches away from a wall, just FYI. The Nines are also internally bi amp for some great separation between high and low frequencies, with a power rating of 100 watts RMS for each woofer and 20 watts RMS for each tweeter. The internal DAC supports up to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz high-res audio for you audiophiles out there who love their music listening time. But the caveat to that is that it does not support MQA or FLAC, so if you want to listen to high-res music, be sure and switch the audio output from your source device to PCM. You've been warned. And of course we have this plethora of connections on the back. The two speakers are connected via this very long, very durable, quality, braided 4-pin speaker cable, not some cheap 18-gauge speaker wire with bare wire on each end. And it even has an extension cable if you need even more separation between the two speakers. And I love the fact that they screw on for some added protection knowing that I have a solid connection that won't, well, disconnect. But even the power cable has the same braided look, so Klipsch pulled out all the stops for these speakers. Depending on where the nearest power outlet is or which side of your TV the HDMI ports are on, you can assign the primary speaker to be the left or right speaker in the stereo pair so that's handy for sure. We've got stereo RCA inputs for an audio device like a CD player or flip this switch here and you can connect a turntable to it along with this grounding pin here. But if you're going to be primarily listening to a turntable, you might want to invest in an external phono preamp because the one inside the nines is okay. Moving along, there's a 3.5 millimeter aux port, subwoofer out to extend that bass response into cinematic territories, optical in from a TV, and a USB-B input from a laptop or PC, USB-A port for servicing, and an HDMI ARC port to also connect to a TV. And since it's ARC compatible, that means you could control the volume using your TV's remote. But speaking of remotes, the Nines of course do come with their own. Nothing fancy, just a good old fashioned physical remote you can hold in your hand if that's your jam, with power and volume buttons to control both your speakers and subwoofer, dynamic bass boost, and your various input selections. Dynamic bass boost, for those of you unaware, is a feature that keeps a rich amount of bass present in the mix even at lower volumes. I personally didn't need it, but it might be a feature that some of you out there might enjoy. So have at it. And lastly, if controlling with your phone is your jam, the Nines are also compatible with the Klipsch Connect app, which aids in firmware updates as well as custom EQ adjustments to make them sound exactly like you want them to. You can quickly choose between EQ presets like flat, vocal, which boosts the mids, bass, which obviously boosts the bass, rock, which slightly boosts the bass and treble, or custom to allow you to make your own EQ preset. Here you can also toggle between dynamic bass boost on or off, night mode on or off, switch inputs, go into settings, or even check out some helpful videos, quick start guides, manuals, FAQs, or open up a support ticket. Not the most robust app by any means, but it is handy to have if you prefer controlling the speakers that way, amongst all the other devices I'm sure you control with your phone these days. When I first fired up the Nines, I had them set up in the living room on top of our vintage record player. Although unfortunately the record player is so old that the external speaker connections are so shot that when I attempted to connect it to the Nines, the buzzing sound was so loud I just 
couldn't handle it. It works fine with its own built-in speakers, but kind of a bummer that I couldn't have a vintage record player sound coming through these nice new speakers. Maybe I'll mess with it some more later. But I did connect my phone to them via Bluetooth and also connected my laptop to it with the provided USB cable, sat on the couch and worked on a couple scripts while listening to several different genres of music. I was impressed with the bass extension because having those 8 inch woofers definitely helps push those low frequencies out into the room. The details in the high frequencies were crisp, which I've come to expect with Klipsch, so the 9s did not disappoint there. There were a couple lo-fi hip-hop tracks that came on while writing scripts that made me look over at the speakers and think, dang, those twinkly little synth effects are coming through crisp. And vocals came through buttery smooth, especially when my wife put on some classics like Nat King Cole, Etta James, Frank Sinatra, and Ella Fitzgerald. I could hear the qualities of those vintage microphones they were singing into. It gave me chills. The only time you might want to add a subwoofer into the mix with music is if you listen to a lot of bass-heavy hip-hop tracks. But even then, listening without a subwoofer, the Nines handled low bass very well with great articulation and punchy bass hits you could feel. But if you're the type that really wants to pressurize a somewhat larger room, I'd add a subwoofer into the mix for sure. When connecting a subwoofer though, just know that it automatically puts a high pass filter on the speakers and a low pass filter on the subwoofer. I couldn't find a way to customize where exactly that crossover frequency would be, but it seemed to blend well regardless. Now when I reviewed the fives as a soundbar alternative, I recommended having a subwoofer because of their smaller woofer size, not being able to dig down deep into cinematic based territory. But would I still recommend a subwoofer with the nines? Well, if you're primarily wanting to watch TV and movies, then yes, you still need that extra chest rumbling bass extension for that true cinematic feel. But first, I'd even try without a subwoofer. Some of you may think the nines by themselves are enough, especially if you live in an apartment with neighbors close by. What's crazy about the nines is that they're sitting in this middle ground between bookshelf speaker and tower speaker. I mean, come on, how many bookshelf speakers have 8 inch woofers? There are some, but not a lot. So while the fives were a great desktop solution as an all-in-one system for watching movies and listening to music on your PC or perhaps a bedroom setup, the nines are seriously large enough to be a true soundbar alternative in a modestly sized living room. They can get loud, they are detailed, and you can add a subwoofer if you want, and they're large enough to push those air molecules at larger distances than the fives. At this point, Klipsch might as well make the 11s, which could be powered tower speakers that are internally triamped with, let's say, a 10 inch woofer for bass, a six inch mid-range woofer, and a one inch tweeter. Kind of like the Kef LS60 towers, except hopefully not $7,000 a pair. So who are the nines for? Well, first and foremost, they are for music lovers with the added bonus of HDMI ARC. Now, I say that because of the signature Klipsch heritage look and feel to them, but also because they don't support a lot of features you'll find in an AVR or soundbar, namely support for Wi-Fi, Apple AirPlay, voice assistants like and how they only accept PCM signals and not Dolby Digital, for example. But are they worth $14.99? Honestly, yeah. They are a great soundbar alternative, easy to set up like a soundbar, and they sound just spectacular. So for now, the nines can hold their own when it comes to versatility, clarity, and detail, and sheer size and power. These are so big, they're like bookshelf towers, or book towers, if you will. So kudos to you, Klipsch. You took one of my favorite little versatile powered bookshelf speakers and successfully made them a lot bigger for an all-in-one audio system for even a decently sized living room. Well done. And now it's your turn. Do you need something this big in your living room? Do you listen to music as much as you watch TV and movies and need something that's just as easy to set up as a soundbar? Do you have the fives now and need to upgrade to this size? Let's start a conversation, people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV or movies experience them through the nines. And of course, always be listening.